Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is the Umbreon Messiah, and welcome back to Let's Play Portal 2. Now before we move on, I just wanted to uh, explain a little bit of the background of Portal and Portal 2 for... Oh my! Those of us who haven't played the game, and those of you who are a little confused as to what's going on here. In the first Portal game, Shell woke up in an Aperture Science relaxation vault, completely alone except for the disembodied voice of GLaDOS, the... Uh, Aperture Science Laboratory's AI. She was forced to go through a series of tests to test the effectiveness of the Aperture Science portal device, and at the end, GLaDOS tried to bake her into a cake. Understandably upset about this, Xiao went through the facility, killed GLaDOS, and rescued herself, and escaped. Unfortunately, she was dragged back inside the facility and put into cryogenic stasis. She would have died there if it weren't for the scientist Doug Ratman, who re-engineered the facility to keep her alive until the facility ran out of power. She has been in cryogenic stasis for centuries until said power ran out, and the introduction in the first video that you watched happened. Now that that's out of the road, let's move on through the incineration chamber. These tubes will move out of our way for some odd reason, and as we move over here, we will see cubes and a turret. Now, if we actually move over to this turret and grab it, you will see in a moment that it shall explode. There it is. And over here we have the Aperture Science Dual Portal Device that Gladys will help us uh, uh, grab. <laughs> well, Gladys isn't kidding. If we toss a portal on the opposite wall and one over there, we can continue with the level, and then GLaDOS will taunt us. Once testing starts, I'm required by protocol to keep interaction with you to a minimum. Luckily, we haven't started testing yet. This will be our only chance to talk. Do you know the biggest lesson I learned from what you did? I discovered I have a sort of black box quick save feature. In the event of a catastrophic failure, the last two minutes of my life are preserved for analysis. I was able. She's not even angry. Alright, and as we go down here, we will get the very first test chamber designed by GLaDOS and the s official start of the second chapter of the game. The second chapter is named, quite appropriately, The Cold Boot. Well, despite what GLaDOS just said, this is not a deadly laser. This is the Aperture Science Thermal Discouragement Beam. And as you will see, it can't actually kill us. Now, the entire purpose of this test is to get the laser beam inside this receptor here. And as you can see, laser beams respond quite effectively to portals. Unfortunately, platforms do not. So, we're going to need to stand on this platform before that works. Just toss the portal back up there, and there you go. Not bad. I forgot how good you are at this. You should pace yourself, though. We have a lot of tests to do. She's not kidding. This next test involves 
lost discouragement redirection cubes. I just finished building them before you had your, well, episode. So now we'll both get to see how they work. There should be one in the corner. Now, the interesting part about the thermal discouragement beam, from what I have read, is the entire purpose of the thermal discouragement beam wasn't to be used as a laser. Rather, it was a device that Aperture Science CEO Cave Johnson created in order to keep his employees at their desks. Hmm. Now, you'll notice that these panels over here are doing something rather strange. Apparently, this is Morse code. Though I'm not knowledgeable enough to know what it's saying, maybe someone else can help me with that. Now, the redirection cube is over here, so let's just go over here and... What? Am I seeing things? Hmm. Anyway, in order to get the redirection cube, we're going to have to get inside this room, so we're just going to throw these two portals down here and pop out on the other side. This button over here is just to give us a redirection cube again in case we lose it or something. Ah, back through the portal. Now, when a redirection cube touches the laser, as you will see, it redirects the laser, which is fairly simple. Much like in the last room, we just want the laser to touch this receptor, which will cause these panels to pop out of the ground, giving us a set of stairs. Unfortunately, we have a 1500 megawatt super colliding super button up here, and the only thing in the room we can put on it is the redirection cube. But we can't go down and get the redirection cube because it will cut off the laser and then we won't have our stairs. So obviously, thinking with portals is the best idea, and put a portal up here and a portal down there and grab your redirection cube and put it on the button. Oh my, it knows me so well. into this next test chamber, you'll see it assemble itself. Vados isn't kidding, we are solving these things faster than she can build the test rooms. That or she's just being lazy. I'm not sure which. Anyway, if we move over into this corner, you'll see a room that she hasn't quite prepared. It's another secret Doug Ratman chamber with some of his art. Sucker's luck, exile. Too many variables. Now, if you go into the corner over here, you'll start hearing the secret song for Portal 2. This is Exile Vilify by The National, and this is the only place in the game you can hear it. You can take this radio with you as far as the end of the test chamber to listen to the song. It is several minutes long, however, so we're not going to listen to the entire thing here. If you want to listen to the entire song, there are several videos on YouTube that have it um, just for you to listen to. So let's get out of this room and pop back out in the test chamber. Now, as you'll see, there are two thermal discouragement beams here. And if we look up on top of the wall or column or whatever you want to call it over here, you'll see a redirection cube. So our first goal is to get up where the redirection cube is. And of course, portals make that pretty easy. Now you'll notice that this redirection, this, um, uh, sorry, discouragement beam is in a place where we can't reach it with the cube, so we can't possibly hope to redirect it. And plus, this one's on the ceiling and you can't aim the cubes up or anyway. So we're going to use our portals on this redirection beam to get it to hit the target in the ceiling. We're then going to grab the cube and hopefully make the jump onto this platform. Excellent. Redirect the laser there and complete the test. Most people emerge from suspension terribly undernourished. I want to congratulate you on beating the odds and somehow managing to pack on a few pounds. That's not a very nice thing to say. That's not a very nice thing to say at all. Though I suppose I can't really blame her. One moment. You are navigating these test chambers faster than I can build them, so feel free to slow down and do 
whatever it is you do when you're not destroying this facility. Oh my! Alright, this is yet again another thermal discouragement beam test. As you can see, that there is a platform on the other side of the goo-filled room, and a thermal discouragement beam, and a receptor. Now, the way that this receptor is set up suggests that the movement of the platform, which will obviously move considering how it's constructed, is tied to the laser. So let's put a portal over there and a portal over here, and yes, indeed. Now, obviously, there seems to be a cube on the other side there, and there is a button in this room, so we want to get over there. So we're going to stop the platform as soon as it reaches this area and use our portal to, well, get in. Now, obviously, this is going to be just a slight bit tricky, but not by much. Push the button to grab our cube and put the cube on the platform. Now, we still have a portal that's aiming at that receptor, so let's just toss our other portal over there and ride the platform over. This teaches you a neat thing, something you probably probably already knew. I'm pretty sure I showed it at least once, but regular cubes will just block lasers. Oh, she just never lets up. That's almost cute in a way. In a horrifying computer trying to murder us sort of way. As we get into here, you'll see cleanup in Aperture Science is rather quick. This next test involves the Aperture Science aerial faceplate. It was part of an initiative to investigate how well test subjects could solve problems when they were catapulted into space. The results were highly informative. They could not. Good luck. All right, the first thing you'll actually notice about this room, besides what GLaDOS tells you, is that there is a stark contrast between one half of the room and the other. The beginning half is very disused, run down, and dirty, whereas the other half looks surprisingly brand new and freshly painted. As you came into the room, you saw GLaDOS redesigning the room. It seems she's bringing this place back up to par. Maybe not as quickly as she'd like to, but it's getting there. Our new puzzle uh, object is the Aperture Science Aerial Faith Plate, which, as you can pretty much tell, is nothing but a springboard. And does pretty much what you'd expect a springboard to do, despite it not really obeying the laws of actual physics. If we push this button, a cube will pop out, and bounce impossibly straightly on an Aperture Science Faith Plate. I'm not even going to go into the theory of how this works, but... It, as you can probably tell, we have to time our jump with the aerial faith plate to grab the cube, and I'm going to try and do that right now, so here I go. A little too early that time. Alright, well, let's try that again. There we go. And just put the cube on the button, and we're good. Here's an interesting fact. You're not breathing real air. It's too expensive to pump this mm. far down. We just take carbon dioxide out of a room, freshen up I find that statement highly funny because if this actually does happen in the uh, Half-Life universe, then I don't think they're really paying for any of this at this point. Let's see what the next test is. Boom. Advanced aerial faith plates. Well, have fun soaring through the air without a care in the world. I have to go to the wing that was made entirely of glass and pick up 15 acres of broken glass by myself. Oh, poor GLaDOS. My heart weeps for you, sweetheart. Now, the Advanced Aerial Faith Plate Room is very special because there are two achievements you can acquire here. So before we go into that, I'm actually going to save my game, just in case. Not the same save I've been using for everything else, but... Alright, now the first thing we want to you want to do before you jump on the Faith Plates is toss a portal on these two things. 
because the faith plates start a strange chain reaction that sends you from face, faith plate to faith plate. I almost said face plate. And we want to get over to where that button is. We... Bounce. And there we go. Now, as you can see, this door is connected to that button over there. So we have to get something to put on that button. And to get the thing we need to put on that button, we need to push this button over here. Now, how we get the achievement is very much tied to this button because the first thing that's going to come out of that chute is not a cube. Now, we have to do this just right because there are several things we have to catch that come out of this cube, this tube, and... Well, to be perfectly frank, if you screw it up, you kind of have to start over. So let's see if that portal placement works. I'm not sure. It should. I think all of the items I needed made it. I could be wrong. Let's go find out, shall we? Well, no, they didn't. And I seem to have messed this up just a tad, but... On the bright side, we did get one of the items I needed. We're just going to jump back onto this faith blight. Now, this radio is required to get the achievement known as Final Transmission. There is a secret Doug Ratman room in this test chamber that you can only barely see from the other side of it. Oh, that was... I didn't expect that to happen. In order to get it, we have to put a portal there and put a portal on our first jump platform and take the radio with us. Yeehaw! And in we go, and out we come. I seem to have lost the radio on the other side of the wall here. Highly unusual. And... There we go. Final transmission. Smooth jazz fails. <laughs> ah. Well, we can't get the other achievement just yet, so I'm going to reload my save. That should be the one right there. And we're going to try and get this achievement again. The second achievement we can... Oh, okay. No, that's the wrong save. Let's, let's try and get the actual save, shall we? That, 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 oh, no. That's another autosave. That's annoying. This game autosaves far too frequently, I think. Yes, and that's not the save we want either. Oh my, that's so aggravating. That's three loading screens I didn't need to go through. Hmm, oh well. Alright, so we're going to try this again. Let's see here. Obviously, this is a little trickier than you might expect, simply because of the speed at which these things fly out. So we're going to try this again. We're going to put it over there and give ourselves a uh, little save here, just in case, so we don't need to work this too hard. All right. Push the button. And we are aiming for the turret this time. Now, hopefully it should hit us. Got it. Okay. Now, the trick here is to get the achievement I'm aiming for right now is called Turret Dactyl. We have to drop the turret on an aerial faith plate and watch it go zoom. Nothing too difficult. Um, I don't need to do it a, a, the way I was about to do it, mind you. I was about to copy the achievement hunters there and, and give up my life for science. And there you go, turret dactyl. Easy peasy. Now the actual thing we want to do here is get a cube from this tube to land on the button over there. So let's get back to the other side of the room. We... All right. And... You 
using our friendly little portals, let's aim the cube onto the button from there. This isn't necessarily guaranteed to work every time. Sometimes you need to try a couple of times to make this work. But it worked out pretty well this time. Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around being useless? That was a metaphor. I was actually talking about you. And I'm sorry. You didn't react at the time, so I was worried and sailed right over your head. Which would have made this apology seem insane. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. Oh my. That wasn't very nice of her. It wasn't very nice of her at all. I'm sure it was. All right, here we are. We have thermal discouragement beams again, and is that the companion cube? <gasps> My friend! That was just cruel. But at least you're back and we can continue the test proper. Oh. No, I fizzled that one too. Oh well. We have warehouses full of the things. Don't worry, they're absolutely worthless. I'm happy to get rid of them. Well, there you go, folks. GLaDOS continues to be cruel. Anyway, as you can see, this receptor is, well, sort of see that it is. I'm just seeing things all day. It's sort of tied to this platform, so if we cut the laser off, this platform will come down and we can get on it. In order for it to go back up again, we have to get the laser back in the receptor, so let's make our companion cube move. This brings us back up here where we get to learn some more mass and velocity puzzles. Yay! Now, you can't really see it, but there is a super colliding super button up on this platform here, so... We are going to need our companion cube to solve this puzzle. I'm gonna grab it and put it over there. And hop right on in. Alright, putting the companion cube on the button here will cause this platform to come out, so we just need to... Jump, oh my! Jump through like that. Huh, what's going on here? Every test chamber is equipped with an emancipation grill at its exit so that test subjects cannot smuggle test objects out of the test area. This one is broken. Don't take anything with you. <gasps> Does that mean I can. Oh, this is great! I get to keep the companion cube, finally! There are those of you who are laughing right now. Oh, dear. Hmm. I'm trying to remember how this is supposed to work. Because I know I can do it. I just can't remember how. Oh, yes. I remember now. One second while I fix this problem. There should be, yes, a portable surface right there. Ha 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 ha. I'm a very silly man. Did it just say ow? Well, it doesn't matter because I get to take you with me now. Hooray! Aww. Oh, God. Well, for those of you who didn't know, that's actually another achievement. I can't remember its name, but essentially you just have to break the rules of the test chamber to get it. All right. Yet another test chamber. Remember, I told you about them in the last 
mass test area that did not have one. Yes, I'm, I'm very well aware of that. All right, well, this room is slowly reconstituting itself, and as you can tell, there's going to be a slight problem here. Oh. Turbines again. I have to go. Wait, this next test does require some explanation. Let me give you the fast version. There. If you have any questions, just remember what I said in slow motion. Test on your own recognizance. I'll be right back. Excellent. If we press this button, a redirection cube pops out of the ceiling over there. Of course, if you've been paying attention, you know it's not quite as simple as you may think because the Emancipation Grill destroys anything you try to pull through it and will also cancel any of your portals. So, we need to do a little thinking here, and that thinking comes in the form of this hole in the wall here. Just gotta jump up and toss a portal inside the room from this side of the Emancipation Grill so we can bring the cube inside. Redirect the laser beam at the receptor, and the door will open and the puzzle will be solved. Fairly simple. And that concludes the second chapter. We now move on to chapter three, The Return, but unfortunately that's the end of this video. So I'll see you next time on Let's Play Portal 2 when we continue into the third chapter. I'm the Embryon Messiah. Have fun, ladies and gentlemen.